Amen. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 
those hands to the arms of God.
I give way to you. So I open my mouth and you give it. Don't let my thoughts, my intellect, don't let my opinion get in the way of you speaking. You have free course to shift and to move as you see fit. We need a rainbow world. We trust you to speak. Make it plain. Make it clear. Give us insight, illumination, and revelation so that we may be doers of the world and not hearers only. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all God's people say amen. Amen. Come on, say amen again. Amen. Thank you. I, I, need, I need your prayers. I am, I am, I am, I am one of those preachers who uh, like things like they like it. I'm sorry. And, uh, well, I don't apologize for it. And I'm uh, looking around, waiting, looking at the door, and looking for one of my folk, my musicians, but I don't know what happened. But we, we, but I've been praying that it don't hinder. That I stay in the same spirit, and I need to deliver what the Lord is saying. People don't understand all the stuff that goes in preachers' heads, all the responsibility, and all, all the things that we go through. And I like to stay level and clear head. So that Jesus can really speak. Uh, Pastor, you helped me today because um, I, I came on assignment tonight, and and sometimes assignments uh, are not comfortable because Bishop, some folk look at you crazy. If you ain't preaching the right thing. <laughs> we, we 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 love the gospel unless it hits our toes. We we love the word. But, 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 but I don't know about you, but I like a good filet fish. Yes. I like it with no bones in it. <laughs> what you got to realize, I didn't mean to make it hungry, but what you got to realize is that if, if, if you're going to get a good filet, there's got to be some cutting. If you're going to get it clean and clean it real good, you got to cut some stuff away. A lot of us want to be filet. Meaning we don't want nothing in us that don't need to be in us. All right. But we don't want the word that cuts it out. Amen. Right. But I, 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 I believe, and my wife said it, and I, 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 I covet my relationship with God more than I do your faces. Amen. Right. So if I have an assignment, I've got to do my assignment because... I might not see you again. But I hear him all the time. God was real clear. And he confirmed a little bit what the Lord is saying. And I just believe that, that the Lord is going to speak today and we're going to turn the corner. I'm in the to turn the corner. Turn, turn, turning a corner just means that you have gone from uphill to now downhill. Uh, that's, a, that's a whole other message. I'm going to get into that. My wife is here today. Come on, give God praise. Amen. I've been worried. I didn't see it. I ain't seen it all since this morning. We've been going separate directions, but you know, my day is better when she walked through that door. I ain't just no preacher up here trying to sound good. I love my wife. It ain't that church little when y'all get in the car, get in the church and say, thank you, Jesus. And they go back in the car and say, what one we? Don't think I forgot. No. You can't say amen, just say out. Amen. But, but, uh, before we get into the word, let me honor this honoree tonight. He and his wife, co pastor. Celebrate the man of Eight years. Eight years and I was a new beginning. I just believe it. And God's about to give them just that. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Bishop, we all need the night service. Amen. 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 to your feet real quick. Let's get into this word. I love to stand for the word. And uh, I've got a couple of verses. I know that I like to give all of this. I give context to it and just read a couple of verses uh, to, 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 to save your standing. But I believe it's necessary tonight. So I got I got I got I got to read what I need to read. So Ezekiel thirty seven chapter. Ezekiel 37th chapter. You have to say amen. This is the book of prophets. Amen. Pass songs, get past Isaiah, Jeremiah, and all the other folks you'll get to. Are we there? Use some time say wait on. I don't want to leave nobody. We good? Ezekiel 37 chapter. I'm going to read, read verses 1 through 14, so bear with me. New King James Version says, The hand of the Lord is upon me and brought me out of the spirit, out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of a mouth. And it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were every they were very uh, uh, they were very sin in the open valley. And indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And so I answered, O Lord God, you know. And again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live, and I will put sinews, or I will put I will put you back together again. I will put tendons in you, yes. on you, and bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, put breath in you, and you shall live. Right. And then you shall know that what I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and was, as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over. But there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man. And say to the breath, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe in the slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and great breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceedingly, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They need say, our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we ourselves are cut off. And therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. Somebody say, you shall live. And I will place in you, place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. I know that was a lot, and I need you to pray with me because you can't look at your neighbor today and might get mad at you. But I need you to just hear me. My topic tonight is living through dead places. Living through dead places. You can take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Living through dead places. Uh, 
are living through their places. Uh, uh, what do you do, if you allow me to feel my face, when you are full of life in dead situations? Dead in this context does not mean physically dead. Jesus, God, what the Lord was talking about Israel being coming up from their graves and coming back to Israel. If you understand the context of the scripture, he was dealing in a time where they were scattered. Yes. Judah and Israel were in bondage and actually in exile uh, in Babylon uh, through King Nebuchadnezzar and, and, and they were scattered on the land. So uh, uh, this prophet Ezekiel actually came up the same time as the pretty boy I call him, uh, 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 what's the three Hebrew boys and uh, Daniel? Come on, somebody! And, 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 and he was about the same age as Daniel at the time, uh, young boy that the Lord began to use. Actually, he was studying to be a priest when he was still in Judah. But what happened was when he got captured, Amen. The Lord called him and gave him a vision and gave him an assignment as he was living in exile in the midst of the hardest time of God's people to let them know that it may look dead now. Uh -huh. right, right. But there's life coming after a while. Yeah. Right. And God took him in a vision showed him the dry bones as it relates to dry people. Yeah. As it relates to dry situations. Yeah. As it relates to hope that was lost. That what have you ever been around somebody that used to have hope? Uh -oh. And somehow in the journey of life, lost their hope. Amen. Come on, somebody. And, and if you lose your hope, your faith ain't no good. Because faith is the substance of things. It is the evidence of things not seen. And so if you don't have no hope, you can have a whole lot of faith, but nothing come to pass because you're not open for nothing. what we hope for and tell us the lie and deceive us that where we are is it. Uh -huh. I need you to hunt somebody and tell this ain't it right here. God's got a whole plan for me. There's more in my future. There's more down the road. There's more for me. I'm not going down like I am now. Take a selfie of me right now because when you see me next week, I'm going to look different than where I am right now. Yes. <laughs> 
somebody to tell them I'm going somewhere. What are you doing? When you're full of vision, but everybody else around you can't see past tomorrow. What do you do? You know, dead stuff now can be mean this, it can be unproductive. It can be unresponsive. Right. You know, people don't hear when you say uh, dead situations, they think you talk about them, but I ain't really, I ain't really worried about that because dead people can't hear me no way. <laughs> dead people don't feel. I right. learned, Pastor, if you preach to a bunch of dead people, you might as well just celebrate the three amens you get and keep going. <laughs> because dead people are already shut you up.
Yeah. What, what, how do you handle? How do you handle being in the vision by yourself? Oh my God, help me this, please. How do you handle this? Because it may not just be in the church. It can be in your job. It can be in your home. It can be in your relationship where your spouse spouse have quit on life ten years ago, but you still want more. And you start to wake them up and give them ambition, and they ain't want to do nothing. They don't want nothing, and they they okay in that trailer park because you got a matching mentality. And they they okay getting drunk and cheese, and you want to stay every now and then.
will make you reconsider the goal. If you're not careful, it will make you think you're thinking too big. You're wanting too much. Maybe it don't take all of that. Maybe we don't need that big of a church. Maybe we don't need an extra van. Maybe we don't need no more ministry. Maybe we don't need no more ministers. Maybe we don't need a new stuff on somebody. Because they don't want it and God place it in you. If you're not careful, they'll take it right from your spirit. But I'll come to give it back to you in Jesus' name tonight. The devil is alive. All week long. I gotta do what God has called me to do. In the text, we find the prophet Ezekiel being taken into a spirit, into the spirit, looking at a vision that looks impossible for him. I told you a little bit earlier, it was the it was the worst time that the people of Israel was in exile. It got so bad, they were eating their own children.
sick and tired of things operating that was malfunctioning that said it has to be a better way of doing this. It took somebody opening their mouth and making some action towards something that nobody else had the courage to do. We got too many people running from storms where God says, I can't use what I place in you until I put you in a need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. If you see the value 
and sowing and harvesting and nobody else does, it will make you inquire to God. And sometimes if you're really honest with yourself, you didn't learn to pray until, until you got into a drop. That's right. Amen. Amen. about people being good to you. No, that's right. You learn people ways by them showing them to you. That's right. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. But next one, I'm moving on. I ain't going to hold y'all on that. Y'all get your tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, don't, I, I, want, I want you to get to your spirit. I didn't come to impress you tonight. I ain't come, I can squat. I didn't come to do that. All right. I ain't tuning up. Now that's probably why the Lord and he have my musician here. All right. All right. He said, uh-huh. That's true. <laughs> I still would like a little bit of music, but anyway. He's proud. That is the best problem here. But number two, listen. You can't prophesy, Pastor Hero. We can't prophesy in our feelings. Yeah. That's right. That's right. A lot of us, because we're so emotional about where we are, uh -huh. if we did open our mouth and ask God to help, it wouldn't be good for the other person. That's right. That's right. We'll be doing silly for color purple until you do that by the way. Too many of us are too emotionally attached to our story. Of a test. That's right. God spoke this clearly to me one day, and it changed my it changed my whole perspective on how I see hard times. Right. God says the fact that you're in the test <coughs> solidifies the fact that you already have the information. All right. Because a good teacher would never quiz you on information y'all never went over. All right. That the fact that I'm in the storm says God has already prepared me with the answers to my text. And listen, a teacher can't talk while you're taking the text. That's why your storm is always the quietest time as it relates to God speaking to you. Lord, before God, you were speaking clearly. Now you dropped me off to this dry place and now you ain't got nothing to say? Sometimes God has to let us learn who we are. Or we'll never tap into it. There was a show called Survival. And you ain't know the survival skills until you had to survive. Uh, uh, when I was riding, I learned how to ride a bike. I was almost down the street, going down a steep hill, before my brother finally let me know he wasn't holding on. <laughs> and I'm just riding because I had the confidence That's right. that somebody's hand was holding. But when I listened and heard his voice, and he seemed far away, I looked behind me, and he was way back up the hill, saying, "You got it, you got it." And I started to panic. And I fell and scraped everything up. Not because I didn't know how to ride, but because I didn't believe I did. That's right. God is saying, it's not that you don't have the answer, you just don't believe you do it. It's not that he had not put it in you, you just don't believe you're that powerful. But God sometimes has to bring us to situations where we have to unlock what he's already placed. In verse 3 of the text, the Lord asks him, Can these bones live? And can I just get a, get a rise to text real quick? 
urbanized <laughs> and brandicize it, that's where a lot of us would have started complaining. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Kyle, you talking about these bones? These bones ain't done nothing here. <laughs> these bones been dropped. You want you know what these these bones can't I can't get nothing out of these bones. Oh, stand, stand. Yeah. These bones won't do what I asked them to do. You know these bones, I've been trying to get some. When God comes to you, can you get life out of this person? God, now you know the track record of that person. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to make them a leader? I can't even get them here. So I, they won't do nothing I tell them to do. I don't see no life in these bones. But Ezekiel didn't say anything because he knew his perspective was skewed by his emotions. All right. All right. <laughs> and he turned it back to the Lord and instead of him saying how he felt, he said, Lord, you know. You know. You know. Sometimes we got to stop saying our opinion about how we feel. Right. And just say, God, you know. Your opinion. 